On this episode of Odd Adventures, we go to Mars. Guys, I'm super pumped right now. My really good friend, Mike, and probably the biggest outdoor adventurer I know just called me and said he won the lottery to go hike the wave in Arizona. And he has an extra spot for me. So of course I said yes, no questions asked. We're gonna be joined by Beth and Amy representing Tampa. Mike is representing Detroit. I'm representing LA. We're gonna meet in Vegas and drive to the Utah, Arizona border, get an Airbnb and then wake up for the hike. I didn't realize how difficult it is to get a permit for this hike. They only give about 20 permits per day. You have to go online, register, select a few dates. You have to pay a fee and it's a complete lottery. There's a four to 5% chance that you'll get chosen. Also fun fact about this place is it got really well known after Microsoft Windows 7 released this photo as a background wallpaper. People started wondering where this beautiful place was, doing a bunch of research, and it became super popular after that. So I'm so grateful that they're taking me on this adventure with them, and I can't wait to take you guys with me. Let's go. After touching down in Vegas, we hopped in our rental car and made the three hour drive to Kanab. Kanab is a small city situated near the Utah-Arizona border known as Little Hollywood because of its rich history as a filming location for old westerns like El Dorado and McKenna's Gold. We made it to our Airbnb and got settled in. We're all checked into our Airbnb. It's 8 p.m. right now and we're getting up at 2.30. Yes, 2.30 in the morning. We are an hour away from the wave, so it's going to be a little trek, and then I think it takes about an hour and a half to get to the wave. I'm going to start the hike at 4, catch the sunrise, chill, wander, and hopefully be heading out of the park by 10-ish so we can be back at the car by noon because by then it will probably be unbearable. So. 8 p.m. and now it's time to say good night. I'm gonna go to sleep. Good night. Go time. Got all my snacks together. I took trail mix, hummus, beef jerky, a bagel, granola bars, and of course water. I took three liters for the day. Made some coffee and oatmeal for the ride and hit the road. How's everyone feeling? The wave is in the north section of Coyote Buttes within the Pariah Canyon Vermilion Cliffs Wilderness. It took a little over an hour to get there from Kanab. We arrived around 4.20 a.m., gathered our gear, put our headlamps on, and got started. It was still pitch black, so it was a bit scary, but man, that starlit sky was a sight to see. Oh, and keep an eye out for these little cuties. You'll see a ton of kangaroo rat tracks, and if you're lucky, you'll cross paths with one. Cute little guy stopped right in front of me and stared for a second. After passing the sign to the Coyote Buttes North area, you'll stay to the right along a more sandy desert terrain. Highly recommend to download the All Trails map so you can track your route via GPS. It was a lifesaver for us. There's no trail once you get past this section, and if you're hiking in the dark like we did, it made things even harder to navigate since you can't really see landmarks clearly. There are markers along the way to keep you headed in the right direction, so keep an eye out for those. Little by little, the beautiful warm gradient of dawn began peeking over the rock formations. Don't get too mesmerized though, you may end up a little turned around. I don't know which direction to go though, hold on, let me see which way I need to walk. So, okay. No I was a bit useless on this trip because I didn't download the route. Mine still says we're close by, kind of. Yeah, we want to go up here. All right, good, we're not lost. <laughs> We were lost for a few seconds. After that pass, the terrain opens up and you start to realize the vastness of the wilderness you're in the middle of. This is insane. And soon after that, the colors really started coming through. Keep an eye out for the large butt crack in the rock face. That's your destination. Straight into the desert derriere. <laughs> Honestly though, it's such a handy landmark to know of. Take it all in with every step and be sure to stop along the way to admire the stillness and that view. Found the perfect spot to stop off and greet the sun 
as it brought in all the vibrant colors of the new day and continued on the path to the wave. Boosted morale with some new friends along the way. Made that last little push. And we were there. We're there, yo. I'm pretty sure it's right over this shit. <laughs> no way. Let's admire this for a bit. <laughs> about 6 30 the sun is just coming up we're the only ones here look at this the wave got its name from its stripes also known as lithified aeolian laminae which means rock layers made of wind-blown sand as the Jurassic wind patterns changed, different sand dunes blew across the southwest desert, cementing into the striations that now look like waves carved into the red rock. As we wandered beyond the wave, we started to realize the rest of this unpaved way can get a bit challenging if you wanted to. At some point, we were pretty much scaling the side of the mountain. There are certain routes that all trails will lead you down that are the least strenuous, but once you're out here past the wave, it's any man's land and you're on your own. Explore with caution. Are we going that way? Yes, the answer is yes, we are going that way. We pretty much created our own path as we made our way to the other attractions in the area. The second wave is another beautiful striped rock formation just beyond the wave. And then you go up. You'll see top arch way up there. And hey, there's the butt crack that guided us here. And then it'll really start to feel otherworldly once you venture off. After taking it all in, we took a little lunch break to get ready for the trip back, but had to go say goodbye to the star of the show, of course, the wave. incredible natural wonders I've ever laid eyes on. But the time has come. We don't gotta go home, but we gotta get the hell up out of here before it gets hotter than hell and we don't even make it out. 
All right. Sun's out and ain't playing. It's about 11 a.m. Hacking back. Drank about 65 ounces of water, I think, at this point. I probably stink, that's why these flies won't leave me alone. Beware of the little mini windstorms. It can get a little crazy, but at least you'll get a nice exfoliation from it. <laughs> Admire all the natural beauty around, like the desert trees and cacti, the patterns in the sand, this little guy out here thriving in the middle of the desert sand, or this beautiful long-nosed leopard lizard who let me get all up close and personal. You'll notice them by their leopard-like spots. Although they can also change to a darker form which washes out the spots and emphasizes some lighter line markings. I wonder what these two discovered over there. I see it. I see the car. Eight miles. 100 degrees. 12 o'clock. Nothing like that feeling of pushing through a physical challenge all while getting closer to Mother Nature and discovering her beautiful creations. Bucket list is getting checked off. First things first. Time to hit the road. But before leaving, had to make one more stop off at another nearby wonder, the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument, also known as the Rainbow Mountain. Absolutely unreal. What a way to end the adventure. We all have that one friend. <laughs> oh my god, Ben.